In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we are on the twelfth Sunday of the ordinary time. And we hear about Jesus and his disciples who are caught up in a storm. Seeing how he calms the sea and the wind drops at his word or command, the disciples begin questioning, Who is this? This question should be seen in the light of the biblical tradition, wherein only God is said to have power over the seas and turbulent waters. Though this, the disciples have spent a considerable amount of time with Jesus, they still have not come to know him. It is only in chapter 8, now we are in chapter 4, that the disciples will give a partial answer to the identity question through their leader and spokesman, Peter. It is only after the death and resurrection of Jesus that they will fully realize who he is and then, fortified by the Holy Spirit, boldly proclaim that he is truly the Son of God. In my spiritual journey since baptism, have I grown in my understanding and relationship with Jesus? Who is he for me? In silence, let us give our personal answer. For all our failures, let us ask God's pardon as we say together, I confess, I confess to, to Almighty God, God and, and to you, you my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts, thoughts and in my words, words in what, what I have done, done and, in and in what, what I have failed, failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my, my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, Mary ever Virgin, all the angels, the angels and saints, and you, you my brothers, brothers and sisters, to pray, pray for me to the Lord our, our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, 
have mercy lord have mercy christ have mercy christ have mercy lord have mercy lord have mercy glory to god in the highest and, and on, on earth, earth peace, peace to, to people, people of, of good will we, we praise you we bless, we bless you we adore, we adore you we glorify you we give, we give you thanks for your, your great glory lord god heavenly king o god, god almighty father lord jesus christ only, only begotten son lord, lord god lamb, lamb of god son, son of, of the father you take, you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us you take away the sins of the world receive our prayer you are seated at the right hand of the father have mercy on us for you alone are the holy one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ with, with the holy spirit in the glory of god the father amen let us pray grant o lord that we may always revere and love your holy name for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen a reading from the book of job the lord answered job out of the whirlwind and said who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb when i made clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed limits for it and set bars and doors and thus and said thus far shall you come and no further and here shall you your proud waves be stayed the word of the lord thanks be to god A reading from the second letter of St Paul to the Corinthians Brethren the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this that one has died for all therefore all have died and he died for all that those who live might no longer live for themselves but for him who for their sake died and was raised from now on therefore we regard no one according to the flesh even though we once regarded christ according to the flesh we regard him thus no longer therefore if any one is in christ he is a new creation the old has passed away behold the new has come
the word of the lord thanks be to god kindly rise for the gospel The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, "Let us go across to the other side." And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. and other boats were with him and a great wind storm arose and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling but he was in the stern asleep on the cushion and they woke him and said to him teacher do you not care that we are perishing and he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm he said to them why are you so afraid have you still no faith and they were filled with great fear and said to one another who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him The gospel of the Lord praise to you Lord Jesus Christ We are almost coming out of the second wave but they say the third is to come and probably a fourth and a fifth wave During the first wave one of the images that remains etched in my me- memory is that of pope francis standing alone on the 27th of march 2020 in st peter's square on normal occasions it would be full to the brim he was standing now alone praying under the rain that this pandemic come to an end for that prayer service he chose the passage of jesus calming the storm that we have today if you have time you can read this reflection once again which is very relevant for our times what can we say about storms today there are meteorologists who with advanced equipment are able to make weather forecasts for example We were warned of the recent cyclone Tokte but in spite of all our preparedness it left behind a trail of destruction that science was not available to the disciples even though they were seasoned fishermen they did not expect the storm they were ca- uh, ca- caught off guard okay we might be able to predict physical storms today but what about other storms in life a serious crisis in our health condition a life changing dis- disability with which we must live the failure of our plans and the collapse of our world our social status is crushed by a humbling fall a big loss in business or a loss of job a painful breakdown in a significant relationship 
the demise of someone very dear to our heart. Many such storms do not give us any advance notice. We are never really ready. Life is not always smooth sailing. Just when we think all is going well, it does not. We are caught in a storm and overwhelmed. Storms can come due to a variety of causes. Mainly there are three sources. First, sometimes we blow up our own storms, like in Jonah's case. He decided not to do God's will. It's amazing as you read the story, how many times it says that Jonah went down. After he decided to go his own way, it says that he went down to Tarshish, down into the heart of the ship, down into the sea, down into the belly of the whale. Once you decide not to follow God's ways, there's only one way to go, and that's down. But in the end, God used even that storm in the life of Jonah to bring out something good. He was spiraling down, down and down. But eventually, he came up and even led the Ninevites to repentance. You are familiar with the English phrase, storm in a teacup. It is applied to one who exaggerates a problem or makes a small problem seem far greater than it really is. We should not blame God or shift the responsibility of all our problems to God. Some of them are of our own making. Since we are responsible for such situations, we might need to take the advice of others in order to see the reality more objectively and tackle these problems to the best of our abilities. Of course, if we invoke God's help, He will be there to help us too. Second, some storms are satanic in origin. The devil himself is sometimes the source. In our passage today, we are told that Jesus rebuked the wind. Jesus often rebuked demons. For this reason, most biblical scholars believe that this storm was driven by the devil. We can say that this storm was another attempt of Satan to destroy Jesus while he was sleeping, no less. But Satan had no power to take the life of Jesus. Only Jesus himself would be able to give his life, laying it down willingly for us. The soldiers didn't take his life. He offered it up for us. Sometimes Satan kicks up a storm in our life to try and get us out of track. On one occasion, the Apostle Paul said, I would have come to you but Satan hindered me. The devil is powerful, but not more powerful than God. We can't fight the devil on our own, but with God's strength and armor, we can surely defeat him. Thirdly, some storms God creates himself, such as in Chapter 6 of the Gospel of St. John. After Jesus had fed the 5,000, the people wanted to make him king. Oh, how tempted the disciples must have been to give in to the pressure of popularity. But Jesus said, No, get in the boat and go to Capernaum. And along the way, they again ran directly into the middle of a storm. Why? I believe he did it to divert their attention from something that would have created a bigger problem in their lives. Sometimes God sends us a little storm to keep us from heading into a bigger one. 
And then he comes to meet the disciples walking on the water. He does not abandon his disciples. At the beginning of our passage today, we read that it is Jesus who instructs the disciples to cross the lake of Galilee and go to the other side. They followed him right into the storm. Just because Jesus is the head of our life, just because Jesus is the center of our life, just because Jesus is the Savior and Lord of our life, that does not mean that we are going to be exempt from having some storms in our lives. Remember the trial of Abraham. Actually, his whole life was a trial. David went through trials. Moses had storms in his life. Elijah had difficult times. Joseph, sure, had his share of hard times. Daniel was put in the lion's den. The three Hebrews were thrown into a fiery furnace. Peter was tested. And we know Jesus himself was not spared from the cross. Storms are a real test. Waves were breaking into the boat where Jesus was till it was almost swamped. The disciples panicked. They doubted. Fear got the better of faith. The way we respond to a storm reveals what is inside us. Storms teach us how much or little we trust God. Depending on how we react, we can either survive or succumb to them. Storms help our faith to be stretched and strengthened. Now going back to the gospel, we see Jesus is in the boat but asleep. This is the only time when we find Jesus asleep and it's in the midst of a storm. One of the reasons why Jesus was asleep during the storm was that he was tired. He had been preaching all day, healing the sick, casting out devils. Jesus was son of God, but he, he was also a human being. He was human and divine. He had worked all day and naturally he was tired. When he was tired, he did the natural thing. He went to sleep. But there is another deeper reason which can be brought out through this little anecdote. On one trip, the boat was full of young people. They all laughed at the old captain when they saw him saying a prayer before sailing out because the day was fine and the sea was calm. However, they weren't long at sea when a storm suddenly blew up and the boat began to pitch violently. The terrified passengers came to the captain and asked him to join them in prayer. But he replied, I say my prayers when it's calm. When it's rough, I attend to my sh ship. If we cannot seek God in quiet moments of our lives, we are not likely to find him when trouble strikes. We are more likely to panic. But if we have learned to seek him and trust him in quiet moments, then most certainly we will find him when the going gets tough. Jesus communed with his father frequently and spent hours in prayer, sometimes lasting the whole night. That gave him the strength to face all challenges during the day. In the boat, Jesus has nothing to worry. At this moment, we notice he does not go on to make a long prayer. Rather, when he is woken up, he does what he can do. Rebukes the wind and orders it to be quiet and still. Jesus rebukes twice in our passage. The first time he rebukes the elements, nature. But then even more, he rebukes the disciples for their lack of faith. Our first reading today is taken from the book of Job. It was probably written by a Jewish 
sage sometime around the time of the exile. It addresses the problem of human suffering but does not solve it completely. The book is a kind of a parable and the central character Job represents a good person who must deal with the agony of undeserved suffering. In our text today, God addresses Job for the first time. So far, Job was consulting, speaking with his friends and even questioning God. But now God is answering him. Out of a whirlwind. It's a biblical device to denote a so-called theophany or a revelation of God. And God questions his right in asking all these questions and demanding an answer. He leads Job deeper and deeper into the mystery of creation. Was he there when the wind and seas were created? God tells Job that he is the creator and lord of the seas and the waters and only he can control the wind and the sea and the other elements. I set limits for the sea and fasten the bar of its door, says God. The book of Job, taken in its totality, teaches the lesson that God has plans and purposes which we mortals cannot always grasp. We should trust him. It also states that although the wicked prosper and the innocent suffer for a time, Yahweh finally redresses the wrongs suffered by the innocent in his own time. God may seem distant and at times silent, but is God asleep? The psalmist proclaims that God neither sleeps nor slumbers. He watches us 24 by 7. Even when we are caught in a storm, we must, like the psalmist today, sing, O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. He stilled the storm to a whisper, all the waves of the sea were hushed. As Saint Peter in his first letter would say beautifully, throw your cares upon the Lord, because the Lord cares for you. There's a story about a girl flying on a plane during a bad storm. The plane was going through extreme turbulence, like a roller coaster going up and down, side to side, unsettling all the passengers. While many of the passengers were screaming out in fear and discomfort, the girl remained calm and even smiling. Finally, the flight began to settle down and the people calmed down. One of the adults sitting near the young girl was fascinated by her reaction to the plane during the storm and decided to ask her, Why weren't you afraid? The girl replied, Oh, my father is the captain. He can take us through this storm. Father's Day is celebrated in many countries on third Sunday of June. Let us recognize the pivotal role they play in the building up of the family. Their paternal presence in the life of a child is unique. In our culture, we often take their contribution for granted. There is an abundance of literature that glorifies motherhood, <coughs> although that too is necessary. Sometimes even the point of divinizing them. But there is hardly anything said about fatherhood. Today, let us thank God for our fathers and pray for them. They too deserve our love and appreciation. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In the midst of a raging storm, Jesus is serene and sleeps on a cushion while the disciples are anxious and frightened. They forget the fact that they are in the company of the Lord Jesus who has power over the sea and the wind. Placing our trust in the Lord Jesus, let us pray, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the Pope, the bishops, the clergy and the religious, that they may teach the people to put their trust in the Lord in times of difficulties and trials. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. As Job accepted his sufferings as part of the mysterious plan of God, we too may accept the sufferings that come on our way without grumbling or complaining. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For the fisherfolk and sailors who venture into the sea as a means of livelihood and travel, trusting in God that they may be protected from dangers in the sea, such as storms or sea sicknesses. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. That we may protect our land and oceans, so that they may continue to provide us with food and water, which are essential for our lives on earth. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, that in their moments of anxiety and fear, they may firmly place their trust in the Lord, who can deliver them from all dangerous situations. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us silently pray for our own personal intentions and for all those who have requested us to pray. God our Father, we thank you for the gift of your son Jesus, who by calming a dangerous storm rescued his disciples. He also taught them that they should have faith in him. Give us the grace that we may keep our faith in the Lord Jesus, alive and active. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the Church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Philip Neri our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Placing all our trust in 
Our Heavenly Father, let us call out to Him and pray in the words Jesus Himself gave us. Our oh, Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be Thy, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And, and lead us not into, into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, <clears throat> Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us lovingly offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not, not worthy, worthy that you, that should, you should enter under, under my, my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.